Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at the pipe command and also the grep command and we're going to explore our file system a little bit. Now the pipe command is the pipe symbol first of all on your keyboard is a shift and then it's just a straight vertical line and it's above the enter key if you hold down the shift key. Now the pipe command is an interesting command because what it allows you to do it allows you to take the standard output of from one command and make it the input or the standard input to another command. So for instance, let's say that we want to look at our log file. So what we would do is we could first of all change directory into root var and then log and then let's take a look at what's inside this log directory and you can see there's a bunch of files here and let's say we want to look at our syslog so what we could do is we could cat out the syslog and as you can see there's lots of uh, output. Now we do have with this bash terminal this scroll bar here and someone mentioned to me online that uh, this scroll bar makes the more command kind of useless. Clear this. We could issue this command right cat syslog but instead of sending the output to the terminal, to the window, to the screen, we could pipe it. So I'm going to use a pipe here, and we can pipe it to the more command. And now it's going to show us one screen of output at a time. And if we hit the space bar, then we can see the next page of output. Right? So the point is here is that we have now used the pipe command to help us, or the pipe character to help take the output from one command and make it the input for the more command. And I'll just hit Q on the keyboard to end that. And I'll type clear. So you can see how useful that could be. So what we did before was we catted the syslog file and then piped it. We took the output from that cat command and then um, piped it into a more command. But this time, instead of using the more command, let's use the grep command. Now the grep command, the global regular expression print command, is used to search for lines of text that match a search term. And it uses regular expressions. And regular expressions are kind of like special wildcard characters that ena enable you to isolate searches inside of documents and inside of the output of a file. So for instance, in that last syslog that we catted, there's a lot of information. What if we were just interested, let's say, in the information pertaining to the DH client? So my DHCP client right here. So we could enter that, and you can see that now highlighted in red is every line in the output that had the term DH client in it. And you can see from here that, okay, DH client, and you can see there is the DHCP request and the acknowledgement and then the IP address that was handed out. So that could be really useful. Let's look for some other instances in which we can use the grep command and the pipe character and the pipe command. So this time we're going to change directory and we're going to look into the root and then etc directory. And if we look in here and do an ls command you can see that there's lots of directories and files the blue indicating directories, the white is indicating files. And if you look here, you can see here is an interesting file. This is the passwd file. Let's take a look at it. So we'll cat the passwd file. And the passwd file has basically all of the users in the system and it shows us uh, information about the users. Now, uh, it used to show the passwords in this passwd file, but instead now it shows the, uh, instead of the password, it has an X here indicating this is where the password would go. And what it does show is the user ID and the group ID. And you can see the first line here is the root user. This is the super user. And you can see that the user ID is user ID 0, group ID 0. You can see the location of the root folder or the home folder for the root user is in root and then the um, folder directory root and by default using the bash shell. 
And then these are all daemons or daimons, processes or services on the computer that are running in the background. You can see this one says daimon, bin service, sys, sync, and you can see these are different um, services. And if we go down to the bottom here, you can see that the last line is my user. There it is, Dan. And you can see my user ID is 1000. And you can see the group ID is 1000. And you can see my home folder here, uh, root home forward slash Dan, right? And I use the forward slash or root bin bash shell, all right? So if we wanted to, we needed to isolate a service and what user ID that service uh, has or group ID that the service has, then we could look for it in here. And you can see here the syslog service, right, has a user ID 101 and a group ID 103. Generally, the lower numbers are for built-in services or daemons in the system. Let's take a look again at another file that's in here inside of the etc directory, and that is the shadow file. So we'll say cat shadow. And you can see that right off the bat it says permission denied. So you need to have super user access to look at the shadow file. And the reason is this is where the passwords for the users are. So we'll say sudo cat shadow and then I'll put in my password. Whoops. Put it in again. And you can see that here at the bottom, there's my user, Dan, and then here is my password encrypted, right? And you notice here that the other services do not have passwords, just the, um, just the user on the system, which is me, not the daemons up above. And let's see here, we can scroll up, right? And you can see there's root, and you can see there's the root password encrypted. Now, if we wanted to just isolate one of these things, then what we could do is we could say clear, and then we'll say cat or sudo cat shadow, and then pipe it and grep for, let's say, the user Dan. And then we just get return the line associated with that user and that password encrypted. Let's use pipe and grep one more time. This time what we're going to do is we'll run a netstat command and you can see when we run the netstat command when we run the netstat command it looks for connections to the computer. Um, basically services and ports that we're listening on or connected to and there's a ton of output so what we really need to do is we need to we need to filter this output. So what we can do is we can say, all right, netstat, and this time we'll say dash A. And you can see now that's all, so that doesn't really help out much. You can see there's listening. We're listening for connections here, right? So that we did get a little more information there. And then I'm going to do a netstat AN for numbers. And once again, too much output. So what we want to do is we want to isolate this output. So if I wanted to, for instance, isolate it just for the TCP connections, what I could do is, is I could say, let me clear this. I could say, okay, netstat, we want all, and we want um, numbers, and then let's just pipe this to grep and look for just the TCP connections. And if we do that, we can see there's the results for TCP. So these are the TCP ports. And notice these are the TCP ports that we're listening on. And this is really interesting. And I did the numbers here so that we would see the numbers, the port numbers. So there's port 53, which is DNS. And that's curious. So we're listening on DNS port. And why would that be? I'm not running a DNS server. So I'm not really sure why I should be listening on port 53 unless there's some type of DNS mask service uh, running by default. And some people would say that that's a security risk. Maybe we can turn that off. I'm also listening on port 631. That's CUPS. That's 
uh, basically uh, connecting to printers on the network and port uh, 445 which is uh, Microsoft Directory Services. This is uh, looking for SMB file shares maybe on the network, Windows file shares, and um, port 139 which is uh, NetBIOS, right? So this is what I'm listening to or listening on by default for TCP ports.